Next we're going to talk about UDP, which provides connectionless transport. UDP stands for the User Datagram Protocol. Um, it is a no frills or bare bones, best effort kind of service. Right? Those words are kind of euphemisms, meaning we may lose your packet or deliver it out of order or duplicate the packets. Um, we're not going to do much, UDP is not going to do much work for you. Um, kind of reminds me of a, uh, well, I was going to tell you guys a, a joke about UDP, but I didn't think you'd get it. Uh, um, so UDP is connectionless and that is good because there's no handshaking between the sender and receiver before you start sending. That's good because that takes time and it takes packets being sent for that to happen. Um, so each UDP segment is handled independently of the others. Each one is, is on its own. It's not like in a stream like TCP can be imagined. So given that um, setup, why is there a UDP? Lance says speed. Yeah, we said first there's no connection establishment and that means um, it's going to be fast, right? We don't have to uh, have this time overhead where we wait. Uh, secondly, there's no connection state at sender and receiver. TCP does, um, it provides that high level of service, that reliable in-order delivery by maintaining state at sender and receiver so they know what, the, what segment they're expecting next. So this means you don't have to store that additional information and process it. That's simpler and faster. Um, thirdly, it has a very small segment header because, again, there's no state. There's not state you have to pass back and forth. You, you, just, you don't have to transport very much extra information, extra overhead in the header of UDP. Uh, and lastly, there is no congestion control, which might be a good thing because that means there are no speed limits. UDP can blast away as fast as it desires, and the receiver isn't going to slow it down, and the network isn't going to the network congestion isn't going to slow it down. So you might say, well, that's a um, hang on, maybe that's a bad thing because we might just you know bring down the network by flooding it with UDP traffic, um, and that is an issue and um, something that that routers will need to take into account. Um, sometimes you will see some UDP traffic is kind of discriminated against and um, it might be not get the same quality of service. So this is kind of our summary of why there is UDP. It's very bare bones, but that means there's no delay in setup. It's simple and cheap to send. Uh, there's less wasted bandwidth on headers. You know, headers is just down, is sending information, but it's not the information you really care to get a get there. Right? It's just st extra state information and there are no speed limits. UDP is used in things like streaming multimedia since that is very uh, loss tolerant. It's okay to lose a few packets and it still looks okay. It looks good enough um, or sounds good enough. And it's that streaming multimedia is also very rate sensitive, meaning you got to make sure that you can send fast enough. Uh, DNS is also also uses UDP. Uh, you see DNS, it's not, I guess it's, DNS is, it's important to be really quick to get your response with the IP address, and you would rather it be really quick and possibly lose your packet, because you can just try again, than have to do a big connection, uh, TCP connection set up um, every time you want to do a DNS request. Um, other protocols like SMP, the, I think it's a network management protocol, use UDP. Question, what if you need to reliably transport your data over UDP? Are you just out of luck or can you do something? Well, the, the answer is well, you can add reliability at the application layer and do application-specific error recovery. So basically, you could use UDP as your transport layer, but your application layer is going to do some error recovery for you to cover up UDP, to kind of say, okay, well, 
we lost that packet, so I'm just going to redo this, uh, re request this again. Let's look at the format for a UDP segment. It's fairly simple. Um, as we said, it had a very small header. Imagine that this is 32 bits wide. We have a source port number and a destination port number. How wide are each of those? This diagram is to scale. All right, they're both 16 bit numbers. The length, this is the length of the UDP segment, including the header. And this is in bytes. So this is kind of tricky. Um, but this is the number of bytes in the UDP segment. So starting from here to here, if it's 32 bits wide, then how many, how many bytes wide is this diagram? Four, right? Because 32 divided by eight is four. So that's converting bits to bytes. The last part here is the part that we're really going to enjoy. It's called a checksum. And the checksum is a number that's computed based on the data in the packet. And that number is used to check and make sure that the packet that's sent matches the packet that was received. All right, the packet received matches the packet that was sent. So it's a, it's a way of checking that the packet, the segment, is, um, is the same, is, hasn't been corrupted. Um, and it's kind of a, it's an easy, cheap way of checking. It's maybe not 100% reliable, but would give you a, a good check. And we're going to look at in the next section um, how this checksum algorithm actually works. And down here is the actual application layer message. All right, this is the payload, and these are the header fields. So we have to add on 32 bits. We got two rows of those, so each of those are four bytes. Eight bytes altogether have to be added on for UDP. How does this checksum thing work? All right, let's go through the algorithm, and then we'll go through an example. At the sender side, the sender has to compute the checksum and then put that in the packet. This is how he does it. The sender is going to look at the packet, the whole thing, as a sequence of 16-bit integers. So instead of it being um, 32 bits wide, you can imagine it being a column of 16-bit numbers stacked on top of each other. That's the whole data of the packet, the header and the payload. It's going to do a binary sum of all of those 16-bit numbers. Imagine they were all just stacked up on top of each other and you added to them every single row, every single column of bits. Um, it's going to do it in a special math called one's complement, um, which will have to do... I'm sorry, it's going to add them all up and then compute the one's complement. So the one's complement basically um, flips all the bits. That result, summing all of the 16-bit integers in the packet and flipping the bits, is what's placed in the UDP checksum field. Um, one other caveat is if you have if you have to carry a one out from the leftmost bit you end up wrapping that around and adding it back to the rightmost bit. Is that saying one's complement? One's complement, right. It's a format for storing numbers, of kind of representing a negative number. What's the receiver do? Uh, well, on one level you could imagine the receiver is going to do the same thing. It's going to compute the sum using the same algorithm, right? It'll add up all of the bits in all the 16-bit fields, if the computed sum is different than the stored sum, right, if the one that the receiver computes is different than the one that was in the packet, then there must have been a bit that's been corrupted somewhere along the way. Does that algorithm make sense? All right. The real beauty of this is that because we've 
um, computed the checksum in this way. It doesn't actually have to do this comparison in this way to check computed equals stored. Because we added it up like this, if you add up every 16-bit number in the packet and you include a checksum that's made like this, then that should be the negative, the opposite of everything else because you took the ones complement. So when you add them all up, you ought to get all zeros. If you don't, if you get anything that's not all zeros, then something's messed up. So see, that's kind of an elegant, quick way of checking if computed equals stored. So that's why the algorithm is designed this way. All right, so here is an example of the wraparound. So when you're adding these numbers, this is binary addition, which means Binary addition is easy because there's only a few options, right? Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. And one plus one is two, which two in binary is carry a one and bring down a zero. So you see here, so zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. One plus one is two. So that's zero, carry a one up here. One plus zero plus zero is one, like so. So we keep doing that all the way across, and you'll see that we end up getting a 1 as a result. Um, what wraparound means is we take this 1 that we carried out, that kind of overflowed, and we add it back to the low order bit. So this 1 plus 1 is 2, so that's 1 there, 0. 1 plus 1 is 0 there, and then I think that's enough. So this is our sum. So you'd have to do this for every, do a, you know, adding every two numbers up for every 16 bits in the whole packet. And then at the end, the checksum, you flip the bits. You change all your zeros to ones and ones to zeros. All right, so this is the algorithm for computing the internet checksum. This is used in UDP and IP, really, to, um, to give a check to make sure that the data hasn't become corrupted. We'll look later at, in the link layer at some more advanced ways of doing this error detection, um, of kind of doing this checksum something called a cyclic redundancy check, a CRC, um, is another way of doing this that's even better and more robust than this, and also more complicated. You might ask the question, why should we do the checksum at the transport level? Because the link layer also does a CRC or some kind of checksum. Um, isn't the link layer enough? And the answer is, number one, there are no guarantees that your link layer is reliable and is doing the checksum. Number two, um, there's something called the end-to-end -end principle which says that you ought to provide services at the endpoints, at the highest level that you can in order to protect all the lower levels. Um, it's possible the data could be correctly transferred by the link layer but corrupted in the router. Router is on top of the link layer Right? And you, the link layer's error detection doesn't check. It can't check anything above it. Transport layer would check the network layer. This is the end-to-end -end principle. Commu it says that communications protocol operations should be defined to occur at the endpoints of a communication system. Um, Most of the features in the lowest level of a communication system have cost for all higher layer clients, even if those clients don't need the features. Um, so another way of saying that, this is from a famous paper from the 1980s, that if you put functionality at lower levels, it might be redundant because the higher levels are doing it, or it may be of little value compared to providing them at the higher level because the lowest levels can't check the ones above them. They can only check the ones beneath them. So we want to put them at the highest point of the end-to-end -end basis. That's another, again, what I just said. Um, some examples of this end-to-end -end principle are things like a TCP checksum versus an application um, checksum, where the application layer checksum would protect against errors that happen even below uh, it at the TCP level, whereas the TCP Checksum can only check TCP. Um, another example of this is kind of how uh, TCP is very smart and very complicated. TCP is, we're going to see, the most common kind of workhorse on the internet. Um, 
in the sense that most people want reliable communication. TCP is used all the time. It has a lot of complexity. It has um, a lot of overhead to make sure that packets are delivered, segments are delivered reliably and in order. IP, in comparison, is very dumb and provides very low service, best effort service. Um, but the beauty of this is since TCP is on top, it is taking advantage of this very simple, fast protocol, IP, um, and it provides the services at a higher level where they ought to be anyway, at endpoints. So this has been a look at UDP and the Indian principle um, and how UDP works in terms of its, um, its, protocol, its protocol format. Um, and in terms of the protocol design, it just gets to send and, um, and hopefully is received. Very, very simple protocol. Um, every message is independent from each other. Any questions on this UDP stuff?